Hey everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to another episode of Point and Click Puzzle Games. Now, we're going to start actually getting into the meat and gritty of getting yourself set up to start basically learning how to code. So the first thing that we're going to learn to do in today's episode is actually explore the game engine that is basically going to simulate our app and run our code so that we can see it in kind of like a real-time environment as to what's going on. So, uh, yeah, let's check it. Let's get started. Hey, how's it going? Okay, so we are talking all about Solar 2D, which is a game engine that basically is going to run our code, run our Lua programming language when we've written it, the scripts that we write, and basically simulate our game apps. If you've watched a couple of the other videos when I gave you a quick insight behind the scenes as to my agent mystery game that I'm currently building, you, you would literally seen that Corona or Solar 2D, as it's now called, uh, running. That is that is essentially what we're going to learn how to download today. So as you can see on my screen, I am on, it's still called coronalabs.com, the website at the moment. Um, now, just real quick, if you haven't watched my other videos, Corona, bad, unfortunate name, given everything that's going on in the world at the time of me recording these videos, completely unrelated to the coronavirus, just a very, very similar name. Corona SDK is a company that basically created this platform. And over the last four, six months or so, what they've done is they've actually pivoted their company and made this code uh, and this engine, show, sorry, I should say open source. Now, I've covered a little bit about what open source software is and the MIT license that comes with it. Um, you can go check that out. Again, I'll put some links below but essentially this is now called solar 2d and you will still see that they're in a transition stage depending on when you're watching this video it's august 2020 while i'm filming it so things could have changed by the time you've started to watch this but essentially um solar 2d is now the game engine but they're still changing some of the branding as you can imagine this brand sort of if it infiltrates absolutely everything everywhere so let's get you started as you can see on this page here there is a big old blue download button and there's one up here in the right hand corner before you do that parents if you're watching this and you're just thinking about helping getting your kids up and running um you might want to check out some documentation on it first and the easiest way to do that is to literally click on where it says learn she says, and then they've got this whole getting started section and you can click on the introduction to Corona, which they've obviously got to change the name a little bit still for. And it will bring you to this page here. I do suggest you bookmark this because, or at least up here, if you go to the homepage, the documents.coronalabs.com, because you will find as you start or your kids start to if you're a kid watching this, you are starting to sort of start programming things. You will be referring to a lot of the API guides, the plugins and all sorts of information on this website. You will live here. OK, so just help yourselves out a little bit. So getting started, the first one that they've got up here is the introduction to Solar 2D. So as I can, as I said, the branding is still changing. The reason we're using this is because it's a cross platform framework, which means it can work on a Mac. You can write the same code and it will generally work on a Mac or an iOS environment versus um, Android and Kindles. Um, you can even create the apps that you make into executable files to run them on Windows platforms or on a Mac. Um, and, and there's all sorts of things that you can do. Um, you, what generally happens is that you will write the code, but then as you export or basically publish the app later on, which is a miles down the road, you will change the settings on that as it's compiled. And that's how it then works on different platforms and different environments. So if you move on down the page here, um, it does explain a little bit about how a Lua works. Um, they do have uh, the ability to test in real time. You don't need to worry about that right now, but you can set effect essentially connect say some, like a kindle to the corona engine and as you do an update it will navigate or migrate instantly to the kindle app and update because it does it through your wi-fi connection and things like that in the house which means you don't have to keep making a change compiling it exporting it downloading it running it and then see that you've made a mistake and do that again so you've got like a real-time testing environment as well that's quite cool uh moving on down 
Again, you can click here the button to download it, but it does give you some system requirements here. Now, there's a couple of things to bear in mind. I'm working on a Windows environment, which means that I will be able to export my apps uh, to like Kindle and Android style platforms. If I want to export them to a Mac environment or an iOS environment, I actually then have to load my whole system, as it were, again, on a Mac or like a MacBook Pro, for example, and download Corona onto that so that when I export it through the Mac environment, I can then get it onto an iOS platform and things like that. So if you're working on a Mac, you'll have, you will find that you'll be able to create the Android, which is great. It's easy for you in that sense, but you won't be able to run the executable files for a Windows platform, for example, if you wanted it to be a PC-based game. So essentially, depending on how you want to deploy your apps when they are finished, you may find that you need to work on both a, Word, a, a Windows environment and a Mac environment at the same time to be able to then accommodate all of these different environments. But you don't need to worry about that now. That could be months down the road from here. Essentially, we just need to get you up and running. Finally, at the bottom of the page, there is um, some forums whereby if you're really stuck, you can go and ask like gurus much better than me um, for help and assistance. They will be able to help you there. Um, Discord is how they raise some money. So you can go and you know buy them a coffee or something like that to help this whole Solar 2D uh, engine exist for us to use freely. OK, now, before we get into any of that, what you do need to do is click on the download. It doesn't matter where you click on the download. It will bring you to this page whether it's up here or the, uh, on that main main uh, Corona page or if it was on the getting started. Either way, all doors lead to here. They've got a guide. What you need to basically do is understand that they are constantly updating and changing. So you cannot assume that what you've downloaded uh, last month in preparation is still going to be the same. Uh, there's always bug fixing. There's always new developments, new tools, new features, things like that being added as part of the functionality of this engine. And so uh, the best thing to do is come here and have a look. So as you can see, this one was updated three days ago. It gives you a little bit of an update as to what's sometimes happening. Um, they fixed something that was causing something to crash down here. They've got more more tools going into the marketplace. There was an URL error. There's so much functionality and things that they're always fixing. And this is the beauty of an open source piece of kit because there are so many eyeballs on a problem from around the world, all doing different things that you could never possibly imagine every test scenario in a controlled environment. So this is, this is why I love open source stuff. Essentially, you would basically go down and obviously I'm running Windows, so I would click on this, but there's also the Linux version, Mac operating system and so forth. You click on it and it is literally going to give you a downloadable file. So you can click save file and then as you can see up here in my window, it's very tiny, but it is essentially downloading at the moment. So I'm just going to show you this as you can see it's it's downloading now i've already got this installed so i'm not going to go through the full installation process but it's just like installing any other software once the file has downloaded i'm in a firefox environment at the moment you will on a windows environment find it living in your downloads folder and excuse the craziness of my screen because I'm a girl that tinkers so I have lots going on your computer probably won't look quite so busy as mine um, your downloads folder it might be in your quick access it might be under this PC at which point you will find downloads folder um, otherwise you could go through uh, your sort of C drive user and then as you go into your actual settings, you'll find the downloads folder. When you're in the downloads folder, you will find that it will be the latest file that's up and running. And then you can double click on it and literally it will prompt you. And it's just opening in a different screen. Let me just bring it on. There we go. Let me just get rid of everything else. There we go. So as you can see, it will open up this little sort of wizard as it were to basically do the installation. I am going to su suggest this is how I've done it. I have not fiddled with any settings. I've literally taken and accepted the default everything. And that's what I suggest you guys do as well. So at the moment it's saying it's computing space requirements, which is why the buttons are not currently enabled. So basically what it's doing, it's kind of having a look at my computer to see if I've got enough oomph in my computer to be able to run and install the software. So essentially in a moment that will have finished doing what it needs to do and then I can click on next. Now, once the actual software is up and running, let me just cancel that because I don't actually want that to happen. Once that is up and running, 
um, you will essentially get the ability, I'm just, I can't really show you this screen because I'm running my uh, recording software, but you will essentially get the ability to load Corona. Now you will see something very similar to this. Obviously you won't have any recent projects because you wouldn't have loaded it yet. But what you've got going on here is two things. One is the Corona simulator console and one is the sort of software as it were to run the engine. Now the easiest way to understand what the engine is, um, if you was to think you were going to build a car, <laughs> you could build the car in the garage, you could build the car in the street, you could build the car anywhere, but essentially it's a lot easier to build the car in a garage where you've got all your tools, functionality and protection and a contained environment so that you could basically uh, develop that car and build in all the doors and the wheels and the chassis and the framework of the car. I do not build cars, so you can kind of get the metaphor here. But essentially, this engine, Solar 2D, is essentially your workshop, okay? If you literally think of this as being the car garage, the garage with all of the tools and functionalities that you're gonna need to be able to build that car, you're not building a car, you're building an app, and essentially this is our workshop, okay? Now you kind of got the idea of why you need this, okay? Some things that you can basically have a look when you get here. Down in the bottom left, they've got some, um, oh, let me just bring it back up on screen, my bad. Down in the bottom corner here, they've got something that says demos. And these are just some sort of uh, projects that you could go and download and run so that you can see how the code's compiled. Um, I would suggest not doing this necessarily right now because it might actually scare you off from doing things because some of these are quite complex games, but you can, obviously tinker and play in the future when you get a little bit more comfortable as it were. So let me just go back and get rid of that. Right, so what we've got going on here at the moment is we've got our console and we've got our simulator. Um, there's some quick links for getting started, but there's also some samples. Now, if you click on the samples, they've given you some other little codes, games that you can do and tinker with, or if you want to see an example of, I don't know, buttons or a status bar on your phone or something like that happening, there are some examples of stuff going on here. So the famous Hello World is an app there we go. Or oh, let me just make that a little bit smaller because it's not quite all on screen at the moment. So this is the simulator. You can see now that I'm even changing the size. So I'm, I've got it set to a, an iPhone X environment because that's what I have. But then you could also test it on how it worked on a Kindle. But you can also zoom in and out. So this is real life size screen. Or I could go back to my iPhone X. There's like the real life size. It's, it's more or less the kind of size of my iPhone X. Um, you've got um you could look, look at it as if it was on an ipad and you can change the style and the size so you've got all of like these kind of test environments to simulate how your game or your your phone or whatever it is that you want to test it on would possibly look in a real world situation and of course if you're a bit hard of seeing you can also zoom in and double the size make it a little bit easier for yourselves so this basically the fact that we've got an image on screen and a little bit of text is a hello world app it literally does nothing but give the command to say hello world on a screen and show an image and it's kind of like the first programming tool that you learn in any programming language so it doesn't matter whether you're learning html for a website whether you are learning to code in c sharp uh javascript it doesn't matter you're going to learn how to program a hello world environment and the reason for that generally is to make sure that you've got all your settings and your configuration up and running properly so the fact that i can actually show you this means it's working nicely now this screen here is your console this basically tells you what's going on behind the scenes in the brains of the uh, workshop, shall we say. Um, so at the moment, I can clear this and I could relaunch my app, at which point you can see here instantly on screen, it's giving us a little bit of a copyright script and so forth. And this is basically when you're testing your code to see if something is working and you're going through this process on a linear basis. Remember, in my other videos, I've explained how... Corona, oh, sorry, how Lua is a linear language where it starts and loads the top of the page and reads down. Sometimes you might forget a bit of 
uh, grammar or something like a full stop in the wrong place or you've forgotten to put in a speech mark somewhere and the code breaks and you've got a bug or a problem that you need to fix this is where it's going to tell you that it's going to be so it will come up and say something like such and such is broken on line 602 and you can go and look at that code and it might not always be 100% accurate but it kind of sends you into the correct location so that you can start to track back through the code and think how it loaded on screen so it doesn't mean a lot to you guys right now but you are again are going to live up here with regards to uh, bug fixing, learning Lua, learning how to code, see what's working in your app and so forth. But essentially, if you can get to this point where you, let me just uh, go back to, let's see if we can open the pro another project. Now I haven't got any save that I want to go through at the moment. Um, but essentially, you can go back to this screen here and look at all the different samples. There are loads and loads and loads of different ones. That was like the basic Hello World one. Let's have a look down here. Um, I have not even played with half of these, to be honest with you. I don't even know what half of these are. Um, I'm just trying to see if I could guess something that would be quite fun. But there is there is lots of this. You know, these are examples on how to do storage. You might want to save data in your phone. If, you know, people are playing a game and they've only got halfway through. You don't want them to close the app and then the whole game restart again. You want them to be able to pick up where they left off. So that means you're going to need to learn how to store data on the phone or your iPad or whatever it is. So there's all sorts of things going on. Let me click on button events. I have no idea what to expect. Um, waiting for a button event. So there's lots of different types of listeners. So this isn't gonna mean much for you right now, but it does mean that you could go and play with those samples, dive in, have a nose, explore, get used to the environment and make sure that your solar um, simulator is working. Now, the only other thing that I am going to basically point out to you that you might see as a challenge if you've not done this before, is we have two windows open here. We have the Corona simulator console and we have the Solar 2D simulator. Now, just interact with Corona and Solar 2D as being one of the same thing. So depending on when you're watching this video in the future, the chances are they would have got through the branding process and the, the simulator console will actually become Solar 2D simulator and console. So they're still rebranding as I'm making these videos at the moment. But essentially, if you, if you open this up and you're struggling and you can only see the console, but you can't see the simulator over here, um, close everything down and literally type in solar 2d simulator and it will basically let me close this project it basically will then force this screen here this black screen to open and when this is being opened it naturally opens the console but you can actually open the console without the simulator which is sometimes the challenge people have so i'm going to leave that hit uh, at this point today um i hope that kind of makes sense and that you've managed to install um Basically, we've now got our workshop ready. What we'll need to do in the next video is basically download a tool to be able to write our code. And then we're gonna need to learn how to save our documents so that we can then run them in our simulator. So these two tools are gonna to work hand in hand. You, it makes life difficult if you don't have both of them existing. So this is part one. And next one, we're gonna basically learn how to download Visual Studio. And I'm gonna tell you why we're working with Visual Studio and not another different script or texting or coding editor. So that kind of brings me uh, to a close. This was uh, fun. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe, stay notified. I'm Angela McCall. And this was Point and Click uh, Mobile App Game Design. Thank you very much indeed.